O Lord, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead us, let them bring us to the mountain of thy holiness and to thy dwelling place. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear us. For you, O Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to our prayer and attend to the voice of our supplications. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. And see if there be any wicked way in me. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Glory and might be unto him forever and ever, amen, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, amen. We'll now say our recitation, which is from Psalm 4. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. O you sons of men, how long will my glory be turned to shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who will say, who will show us any good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than in the season when their grain and wine increased. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Please be seated. Our story for today is from the Gospels, story of the Lord casting out the evil spirits from a man. The title of the talk is External Lies, the Lies. And we'll begin with our first lesson from Psalm 27. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord.
Our second lesson is from Mark chapter 5. Then Jesus and the disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him, and he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And Jesus said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Our third lesson is from the Third Testament, from Apocalypse Explained, Secrets of Heaven, and Divine Providence. The demons cast out by the Lord, by which many were then obsessed, signified falsities of every kind, by which the church was infested, and from which it was delivered by the Lord. Spiritual struggle is a battle inside us between the evil spirits and angels present with us. And we sense this conflict indistinctly in our conscience. We never produce anything misguided or wicked out of ourselves. It is the evil spirits with us who produce it, and at the same time cause us to believe that it comes from us. Such is their malevolence. What is more, at the same instant that they are filling us with these things and making us believe this way, they are also accusing us and condemning us. If we believed that, as is truly the case, everything good and true comes from the Lord and everything evil and false comes from hell, then we would not claim the goodness as our own and make it self-serving or claim the evil as our own and make ourselves guilty of it.
by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. There are many descriptions in the Gospels of the Lord healing people by doing exorcisms, casting out evil spirits that had been possessing them. In most of those descriptions, the Lord's omnipotence is clearly visible as he casts out evil spirits with just a word in one seemingly simple step. But our story from Mark today is different because it is more of a two-stage exorcism. The evil spirits are cast into a herd of pigs first, and this is what allows the man to be healed. So what does this symbolize in our lives? The Third Testament tells us that the demons cast out by the Lord, by which many were then obsessed, signified falsities of every kind. Or another way of saying this is that these demons are lies or negative thoughts or unkind or unhelpful ideas that find their way into our mind and start to control our lives. From this perspective, it makes a lot of sense that this man was possessed by a legion, which means thousands of evil spirits, because it's certainly possible for our minds to be filled with thousands of false ideas and negative thoughts. For example, the reason I'm miserable is because of those people. All the people around me are stupid. So-and-so is clearly going to hell. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. If I just had more money, then I'd be happy. What's the point of trying to make the world a better place? It won't actually work. The thing that's wrong with this relationship is that person. These are outwardly focused lies, but there can be inwardly focused lies as well. I don't have time to focus on spiritual things. I'm too stuck in these bad habits. I can't change. I've got it worse than anyone else. No one really likes me. They just put up with me. I think the Lord made a mistake when he made me. We can use these thoughts to beat ourselves up, like the man in this story was cutting himself with stones. Stones can symbolize either truth or falsity, and we can use either one to cause damage to ourselves or to others. We can have a legion of lies whispering in our ear, and these thoughts can leave us feeling isolated, enraged, trapped, and miserable, just like the man in this story. Sometimes it can be easy to break free from negative thought patterns. Sometimes a kind or encouraging word from a friend can break us free, like the times that the Lord cast evil spirits out of people with just a word, as it says in Secrets of Heaven, one angel can drive away tens of thousands of evil spirits, since evil spirits cannot abide an atmosphere of mutual love. But other times, it can be a lot harder to break free, and it can end up taking several steps. And I think that is what is being described in this story. The details of this story describe what it's like to be stuck in negative thought patterns. When we're in that place, good and true ideas tend to not have any effect on us. And so the man was living in a cemetery, symbolizing the way that the truths we read or hear from others can come across as dead to us. Love the Lord? How will that help me fix my problems? Love my neighbor? What if my neighbor is driving me crazy? These truths are dead to us. This is also represented by the fact that this man was naked, 
Clothing represents the truths that protect us. We feel vulnerable without comforting truths. We can easily be convinced by lies unless we are clothed and protected with truths that are soft, gentle, durable, and warm. And so he was naked and living in the tombs, describing the states when we feel we have no truths to protect us and no truths which feel living or useful. This man was also supposed to be chained up, but he kept breaking out of his chains. Chains represent having our actions be bound to what is good and true. But in the state described in this story, we keep breaking away, failing in our own attempts to govern ourselves, backsliding into our bad habits, breaking our own chains and shackles that we've used to try to keep us on the straight and narrow. When we're possessed by negative thought patterns, that often leads to our behavior being out of control. And so the man kept breaking his chains and shackles. And when we're stuck in a really bad spiritual state, we often don't want to do the things that we know will help us. We don't want to be fixed. We might find ourselves saying things like, I don't need to change. Besides, spiritual growth is too hard. And it doesn't work anyway. I don't want to read the word. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to ask other people for help. I don't feel like praying or meditating. This is like the man in our story saying, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. At first, we often reject the Lord from our lives. We don't believe that spiritual life can actually help us. And this, of course, is just one more of the demons, the false ideas telling us lies. Some part of us might recognize that the Lord is what we need, and we might feel mentally humbled, like this man bowing before the Lord. But it's not a worship of adoration yet. It's a worship of fear. Don't make me change, please. Change hurts. It would be so much easier to just stay this way. Like the children of Israel wanting to go back to the slavery that they were used to, rather than facing the wilderness of change. And so the legion of demons begged Jesus not to send them out of the country. We can sometimes feel like we will go out of our minds if we have to try to change. These thoughts feel like me. What will be left of me if I try to give them up? But the Lord is always working to bring his goodness and truth into our lives, whether we want it or not, because he loves us and wants us to experience true freedom, true peace, true happiness. And so Jesus began to cast out the demons, come out of the man, unclean spirit. But as if he knew that this wouldn't be a simple exorcism, he stopped and said, what is your name? When we're really stuck in negative thought patterns, one of the first steps we have to take is naming our problem. Rather than just thinking the thoughts we have, it's useful for us to identify the thoughts. I'm feeling like nobody loves me. I'm thinking that I've got it worse than everyone else. I'm naming the thought or the feeling for what it is, rather than simply believing it. Like the fairy tale story of the villain Rumpelstiltskin, when we name things, they lose their power over us. Or like Adam naming the animals in the Garden of Eden, when we can put words to our feelings, we find more emotional peace. When a child is frightened by strange shapes in the dark of their room, it loses its power as soon as the light is turned on and it can be named as simply a pile of laundry. Or when we experience health issues, 
We can often get consumed by a fear of the unknown. But as soon as a doctor is able to diagnose us and give a name to what we're experiencing, we often feel a sense of relief. After my mom passed away, there were times when I found myself in negative moods at random times, and I couldn't figure out why. But as soon as I could put a name to it, this is grief. It helped me to find a little more freedom and peace. And so the Lord asks, what is your name? The next step or the next part of the process is to externalize the negative thoughts. And so the Lord sent the legion of demons into a nearby herd of 2000 pigs. For the ancient Israelites, pigs were considered unclean animals. And in the Third Testament, it states that in the stories in the word, pigs or swine represent evils. Part of the process of breaking free from the power of negative thought patterns involves being able to see these thoughts as if they weren't inside our own head, but instead something outside of us. We need to be able to see that these false ideas are really just evil spirits trying to drag us down like the pigs rushing down into the sea. It can sometimes even help to identify a negative thought as a pig thought. Yeah. It's not me, that's a pig thought, trying to drag me down, and I don't need to identify with it. We might even say to ourselves, this way that I'm talking to myself, is that how I would talk to other people? Or this way that I'm talking to somebody else or thinking about somebody else, is that how I would want other people to talk to me? The Lord's divine truth has the power to give us perspective on our own demons and allows us to externalize the lies, to see them as if they were outside of us, because in actual fact, they are. As we heard in our readings, we never produce anything misguided or wicked out of ourselves. It is the evil spirits with us who produce it, and at the same time, cause us to believe that it comes from us. If we believed that as is truly the case, everything good and true comes from the Lord and everything evil and false comes from hell, then we would not claim the goodness as our own and make it self-serving or claim the evil as our own and make ourselves guilty of it. The process of reformation and regeneration can take many steps. As it says in the Third Testament, our sins are not instantly forgiven. They are forgiven in accordance with our regeneration and our progress in it. The first step in the process of our reformation is the step of self-examination, seeing our thoughts and feelings for what they really are, externalizing them so that we can see them more clearly. And there are many ways of doing this. It could take, of, take the form of journaling, actually putting those words externally outside of us, praying to the Lord, talking with the Lord, sharing in small groups, getting those words out in the air, doing a 12-step program, meditating, reflecting, talking with a close friend or family member, or talking with a counselor or minister or therapist. These practices are some of the many forms that the Lord can take as he enters our lives and begins to cast out our demons. And through these steps, the Lord can help us find peace, like the man at the end of this story, sitting and clothed and in his right mind. The power of the Lord's goodness and truth can free us from the power of negative thoughts. And we can experience joy and gratitude, like the man who told everyone all the great things that the Lord had done for him and how he had had compassion on him. As it says in the Psalms, for false witnesses have risen against me and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed 
that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Please rise. And now to the one and only God, Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, help free us from the power of negative thoughts. Help us to name the thoughts and feelings that flow through our minds. Help us to recognize that negative thoughts come from hell so that we can stop identifying with them and find freedom and peace instead in the power of your love and wisdom. Amen. Be gracious unto me, O God, according to thy mercy. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy generous spirit. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.